So welcome to OCR A-Level Biology. Uh, I'm Mr. Johnson. Hello. You will see me in the corner over there. Uh, this is Foundations in Biology Presentation 1, which is going to be all about microscopes. Uh, apologies if I end up looking in the corner over there instead of the camera over there. You'll soon get used to that. So um, Unit 2.1.1 on cell structure has a number of parts. We're going to focus on three specific sections today. We're going to look at the difference between magnification and resolution, the use of microscopy to observe and investigate different types of cells, and cell structure and range of eukaryotic organisms. But eukaryotic organisms are things which have a nucleus, uh, and the use and manipulation of the magnification formula, so some maths. Uh, maths is very important in the new A-level curriculum. Uh, let's look at the difference between magnification and resolution. A simple uh, definition, first of all. Magnification, number of times bigger an object appears compared with its original size. So to magnify something like these bacteria shown here, so that you can actually see them, you've got to make them appear bigger. They're not actually getting bigger, you're just using them something to make them look bigger. So they are appearing a bigger compared to its original size. You can't see them with the naked eye. You use a microscope, you can see them. Resolution is subtly different. Um, it's the ability to show fine detail clearly. The higher the resolution, the clearer the image. So you could magnify something, but it might not become clearer. Let's look at this image of a cute little kitten. If I magnify it and make it bigger, it's not any clearer, it has the same resolution. You can see now that it looks slightly fuzzy. So it's not become clearer, it's just been magnified. You can make the image larger, but you haven't made it clearer. So resolution is how much clearer can you make it? And there are things which can limit resolution, which we'll talk about as part of this presentation. Okay, some simple definitions. Make sure you know what they are, make sure you can write them down. So the use of microscopy. Robert Hooke is somebody we have to thank for the use of microscopy. Um, he was a gifted 17th century uh, instrument maker, a founding member of the Royal Society. Um, he made the world's first microscope, or at least is credited with making the world's first microscope. Uh, and this drawing shows uh, the microscope he created. Uh, you've got here uh, the glass ball. Uh, you can maybe see it a bit more clearly there. With a candle behind it, so you would place a candle behind it that provides the light source, uh, and the magnet uh, glass ball is focusing it onto this, the light of the specimen. And then you are looking down your eyepiece here, so you can look down and see the specimen, which is, uh, would have been underneath here. So the very first microscope, uh, cutting edge technology, magnified things about thirty times. Uh, with that, he then wrote a book, Micrographia, one of the fastest selling books of its time. Uh, people were fascinated to see the fact that there were things which they had never seen before. They were microscopic and therefore had never seen. So looking at, for example, headlights, that's a lovely headlouse here, shown here, um, a fly, and Hook was the first person to look at the fly's eye and realise you know, what was called compound eye, it was made of tiny little segments or fractions. People had never seen that before, before without using a microscope. And Hook also is somebody we have to credit for the idea of cells. Here is Hook's drawing of cells in cork. You can see that he drew lots of tiny individual sections, which he named cells. We're not really sure why he named cells. Uh, it could be that it was named because of the cells in a honeycomb, as shown here, or maybe the repeating cells in a monastery, a monk's cell. So it's named after one of those two things. So how do we use microscopes? Well, let's think about the types of microscopes that there are. There's the optical or light microscope using glass lenses. Yeah, it uses glass lenses to focus light, uh, and the light wavelength is of 400 to 700 nanometers. So in other words, the size of the wavelength of the beam that you are using to look at will be something that will help to uh, look at the uh, material that you're looking at. Uh, and they allow us to look at cells and in some cases sometimes living things and they're relatively cheap and portable. You can pick one up for about £100. Okay, for might not be that cheap but they are certainly much cheaper in comparison than other types of microscope. 
Uh, and here are the key parts uh, when you're thinking about the microscope, you need to know what they are called. So the eyepiece has a lens inside. Um, the nose piece has several objective lenses on there. One, two, three different size lenses. For the smaller the lens, the lower the power of uh, magnification. The bigger the lens, the bigger the power of magnification. Held together by an arm, you place your slide on the stage. You need to clip it in place. Underneath there is a diaphragm which you can open and close so that you can control the amount of light going to your specimen. Um, the light source, often now a lamp. It used to be a mirror which you would reflect light upwards with. Uh, and coarse and fine focus. Obviously there's the electrically powered, there's the light switch and there'll be a cable coming out the back as well. So why is the resolution limited in a light microscope? Well, it depends on the type of wavelength that you use. Light is part of a spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. Remember, you've got visible light in the middle, and then you've got everything from radio waves up to gamma radiation uh, and other types of radiation, light falling in between. So it has a particular wavelength, how long the wave is of the light. So um, if an object is smaller than the wavelength of the radiation being used, you don't detect them. So if we were only using a wavelength of, for example, 700 nanometers, anything that's smaller than 700 nanometers can't be detected by that particular piece of equipment. So um, an optical microscope, um, once you get to about 200 nanometers or so, you can't get any clearer resolution. It's limited. You just can't make it any clearer or any, uh, you might have to make it bigger, but not clearer. So light microscopes, maximum magnification, 1500, 2000 times, something like that. Um, so something like a ribosome, which is smaller than 200 nanometers, can't be seen with a light microscope. This here is an electron microscope picture to show you what ribosomes might look like. Okay, uh, math skills. You have to use math skills in science. These are some of the key math skills you are asked to be able to develop and be able to use. And we'll look at some of these as we go along. So recognizing appropriate units. Uh, the SI unit, the System International units that you need to be able to recognize. These are all measurements of length, centimeter, millimeter, micrometer, and nanometer. Centimeters and millimeters you'll be familiar with. Micrometers, this curly U here is the Greek symbol mu, um, so, but it said micro, so uh, micrometers. There are 10,000 micrometers in a centimeter. Um, there are uh, a million, a million in a nanometer, so it's a thousand times smaller each time. Milli is a thousandth of a uh, well, higher up. So as we go further and further down, conversion tables. How do you convert one thing to another? I want to convert one to another. Uh, let's say I want to convert centimeters to millimeters. Uh, you would use the table to work out your numbers uh, and work your way across. Uh, this can be worked in either way, dividing or multiplying accordingly. Let's look at an example. It's easier with an example. So if we've got two millimeters and we want to convert it into micrometers, let's go back to our table, two millimeters to convert it into micrometers. If we take our millimeters and we convert it into micrometers, we need to do the correct conversion. So if you've got two millimeters, how many micrometers is it? It's two times a thousand, 2000 micrometers and so on. Yeah, so you need to use that. Try these, have a go at trying these. I would pause the presentation now and have a go at practicing these. And there are more examples in the pack that you've been given so that you can have a go at doing those. Now. I'm gonna stop the pause for a moment there. Okay, continuing on. Uh, you need to be able to use standard form or standard index form to help to write large or small numbers. You should have done this in maths at GCSE. Let's just reinforce that. In standard form, a number is always written A times 10 to the power of N. A is always between 1 and 10. N will tell us how many time places to move the decimal point. Again, let's look at an example. Um, here we've got a very, very big number indeed. Uh, so how do we convert that to standard form? Well, let's have a look. You take your number 
and it's written as somewhere between 1 and 10, so we said 8.19 times 10 to the 13. It's 10 to the 13 because we've got to move the decimal point 13 places to the left to get to be 8.19. So in other words, we've moved the decimal point to here, that's 13 points to the left to get to be 8.19. Uh, convert this fraction, uh, sorry, this decimal into uh, convert this number <laughs> into a more sensible number. Write uh, this in standard form. You've got to take it and again to get it to be uh, a decimal point, move the decimal point across. So this time we're moving it across to the right, taking it that way to that way. So we've got to be 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6. So moving it across to the right, uh, then you uh, that becomes a minus number. More examples in your pack, please practice. To do it on a calculator, type in your number between 1 and 10, press EXP, type in the number to which 10 is risen, and it will show you how to do it. Uh, if you get a chance to access this presentation, you can play around with how small the cell is. We'll skip this because it's an interactive thing that you can try at home. Uh, and let's go on to conversions or present uh, converting numbers into uh, using the I am triangle or aim triangle. Um, okay, here's an example. Uh, note that it might vary depending on how big your screen is, what this size is. Let's say this number is 50 millimeters, so the image size is 50 millimeters. We said we've magnified it uh, 1,200 times. Uh, to calculate the actual size of that cell, we need to be able to use the calculation AIM. So it's 50 divided by 1,200 to give you 0 0.0416. Remember though, you've got to convert your 50 into usable numbers first. So convert it into micrometers before you do your division. Uh, let's look at another example. Here we said, assume the Aramont L is actually 90 millimeters long. Calculate the magnification, show your working. If L is 90 millimeters, you need to turn your 90 millimeters into micrometers first. So you're using the same numbers, micrometers and micrometers. So millimeters to micrometers times a thousand. 90,000 divided by 20 gives you times 4,500. Again, examples in your pack, practice. Uh, again, if you have access to the actual presentation, you can use the virtual microscope to examine slides. Here's one we used earlier. You've got your measuring scale. I measured that distance there and said, well, that's about half a micro, uh, millimeter because that one there, that chloroplast is half a millimeter. That was correct. And if it's half a millimeter, and you've got the magnification that you should be able to work it out. So uh, half a millimeter, turn it into micrometers first, so times a thousand, so it's 500 divided by 60 gives you 8.3. More examples to practice. Okay, I'm going to pause there uh, and then we'll start this presentation. Again, the second presentation, we'll talk about the types of microscopes. Thanks for listening.